Um, we have a fair bit of time for discussion, so we open the floor to questions. Yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to comment on the, the kind of the REF experience, and Australia has the ERA, and a, someone that I know looked at the behaviour of the panels who review, do the light touch refereeing and, or peer review, and they noticed in their institution in one discipline that their institution did very nicely in that discipline and nobody had actually looked at any of the publications in that discipline for their university. So there is also another variable which is the behaviour of the expert panels. Does it warrant a, I mean it, it, it's a statement, right? Um, it, 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 it's, it, yeah, it, it's very true. I, I mean it's fair to say that there, the panels don't uh, they don't all operate in the same way, and they don't have to. They, they decide how they operate. But yeah, you're, you're quite right. It's another vagary of the system. Uh, Jen, just a question is, do you see a, a role for libraries in helping uh, the university in uh, their performance in, in these rankings? Very much so. I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, yeah, we, um, I think I said yesterday, for those who were here, we uh, feel there is so much of a role for, for our library that um, in order to deliver on that, to, to cope with demand and to really become as expert as we can, we restructured back in 2012 in order to, uh, not in order to, I've already explained, but to, um, to move us away from what has been a focus on, on subject expertise. And instead now we have three teams of um, people who have really now developed quite considerable expertise around the whole research agenda, but also teaching and learning. And then, and then there's a third team that is our sort of outreach group of people. Um, and it's, it's been, it really has been um, a very rewarding experience because I would say that, you know, I said at the beginning, I wasn't joking, I, I, I feel much more, I feel proud about what the library's doing, but I feel much more confident that the library has a future, our libraries have futures, because um, never before have I seen so much interest and dialogue between the library and senior stakeholders in the institution. We're very much uh, working in partnership. Um, the respect is, is there for what we can achieve. And uh, yeah, around bibliometrics, citation analysis. Um, I have a team of people who produce reports for the president and his team to show how uh, our, our schools are competing or how we, how we sit alongside disciplines in other institutions. Um, I mentioned the highly cited researchers and the nearly highly cited researchers. So there's masses going on, uh, as well as the things that you're all doing around research data and um, everything else. Yeah. I'm Carol Felthus from the Rockefeller University in New York, and I would just like to make a comment. And what I heard this morning and what I hear from you is what I see at my own institution, and it's a kind of frantic ramping up uh, of the competition internationally in science, and a greater focus on outcomes that are more applied and less basic, and also more focus at the graduate level and less on undergraduate and even on secondary school level education to have to have these wonderful, bright, and very capable students coming into university level. You have to have good programs when they're much younger than that. And I, you know the pie is not getting bigger, and I'm wondering if we are focusing too much on one piece of the pie. Okay. Well, th thank you for your uh a great comment. Uh, I mean, I mean, re really, if I mean, 
I, I, I talked about um, the, this experience really forcing us to think about uh, what our basic what our basic mission is uh, as academic institution as educational institutions uh, it's, it's, I think I think it's a matter of uh, it's, it's a matter of fact that uh, I mean we we need to uh, we need to uh, address some some of, some of societal pressures uh, for that at the same time uh, we want to create an ecosystem uh, where delivery of uh, practical and applied uh, solutions can be can contribute to uh, I mean particularly in financing uh, uh, the, the very basic uh, research. I mean we don't we don't want to simply uh, harvest, but we we really need to uh, cultivate uh, uh, the, the basic principles. And of course, uh, we the education and research doesn't simply start uh, with, uh, from universities. Uh, we we, we want to be aware of our primary, our primary and, and secondary education. Keio University, by the way, have uh, actually has elementary. Uh, we have all the way from elementary school to uh, PhD program. And uh, so, so uh, one of uh, the the mission that I have within Keio is to try to redesign our elementary and secondary education uh, to, uh, to, to provide them with the necessary um, uh, skills and, and knowledge to, to be able to really operate in this, uh, this globalized world. So, so, so I mean, I, I, th I think it's, it's, I mean, yeah, ranking and feedback these, these are all useful. I mean, these are, we, we have to honor them to really think, uh, you know, about, uh, about ourselves and what we, what we are doing. Uh, in the end, uh, we each have to, uh, to uh, focus on what we believe is, uh, is, 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 is good for the society. We need to communicate that so that it will be reflected uh, to, to the rankings. Uh, so, uh, I mean, but, but in the end, I, I, think, I, I think feedback uh, uh, is, is good in, to, to the extent uh, we, we, we constantly ask that question uh, to ourselves. I hope I answered your uh, question. Do you have a Should comment? Should I uh, make a comment just briefly? I, I'm really torn about it, actually. I think you make an interesting point. Um, I suppose I... I'm minded or mindful of Peter's comment about, you know, some of our colleagues are on the beach, you know, or if not on the beach, they're somewhere else. You know, th this does actually um, increase performance. It increases productivity if that's what we think universities should be doing. And I think that's the, uh, that's the, the question. But for me, I have seen, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's good to see a sort of a balancing out of, of, of effort because resources are so tight that to know that uh, people can no longer get away with producing one publication and then keep reproducing it time and time again um, for us to buy in our libraries, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased to see that as, as an outcome. Um, I'm, I'm quite pleased, pleased to see the spotlight on some of those people. Um, I'm Jeff Zesky from the University of Pittsburgh, and I was just um, wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your strategy for supporting the kind of the almost great researchers. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm wondering, if, you know, how receptive are they? Are you have you developed specific services for that population? And has there been any reaction from sort of the great hmm. researchers to that focus? To be fair, it's too soon to, to say, actually, because this is, this is all quite new work. The analysis is going on at the moment, and that's quite detailed. Um, and I'd, I, I'd like to answer that question in maybe 12 months' time. So, Will you tell them they're almost great? And will you tell the others that they're not almost great? <laughs> I suspect there'll be some of that because I mean, being being told you're almost great is fine, isn't it? Um, because the expectation is that resources will follow, and support, and you know, people will be taken off the things that perhaps they don't like doing. So that's an easy message. The other one is is more difficult, but I I, I sense a sharpening up of this kind of management. Really, um, it's uncomfortable. It's countercultural, one might say, 
but I think it's, um, it, it's gradually going to happen because we can't afford for it not to. This is Ivy Anderson at the California Digital Library. Um, we heard a little bit this morning about the role of research data <coughs> management and enhancing institutional impact. And we haven't heard very much uh, about open access publications in uh, enhancing both research impact and the communication of research impact. And so I'm curious to hear from any of the speakers this morning about um, the role of open access publication in research assessment frameworks and also in enhancing institutional impact and the communication of that impact uh, and whether there's an opportunity uh, in that space for collaboration between libraries and research offices in uh, fostering a more open uh, uh, research dissemination environment. It's a great question, but I think our next speaker is going to cover this. <laughs> is that right, Walter? No, no I'm not. I'm not covering it. Not okay. It is yes, it is compulsory for so for the ref going forward in the UK. This is just in the UK. Open access. Your your publications. The, the publications you enter. Your four publications have to be um, open access, um, and it's all about increasing citations and, of course, making everything as widely available as possible. So that's a short answer to a, a, a quite detailed question. A, a similar policy is being implemented in Japan uh, to, uh, a, a, to, to be more specific in, in the funding for National uh, Research Fund. Uh, the extra cost of uh, making open access is uh, included uh, in, in, in the evaluation of uh, uh, in, in the granting of that. So, so there is an explicit uh, policy towards that, and I think this is a, a game of, um, I mean, the competition of influence uh, probably is uh, uh, a good way to, uh, to describe the situation. And um, I, I think there's a general trend towards that, of course, but the, uh, the infrastructure uh, for, I mean, I mean including uh, you know, copyright and uh, in a business model, all, all of that uh, is yet to be resolved. But uh, I think the the, there's a general trend in that direction. I, that's, that's, I think that trend is global. Okay, um, I have a question for both of you that's related to the, the question this gentleman asked, and that is about faculty response. Because in the US, and um, I'm from the University of California, faculty don't have to do anything that we tell them to do. Right, and in fact, a lot of times they will stubbornly do the opposite of whatever we tell them to do. So um, this ranking stuff is just really pissing them off. You know, they, they don't buy into it, they agree with you that you know, there are some very strong ethical questions about this. At the same time, the university administration is adamant that we have to focus on this and right, uh, you know, increase productivity. I'm just not seeing a lot of faculty saying, yeah, let's do it, you know. What have you done to motivate them how do you respond to that if you have absolutely no, you know, a force available to you to make them do it? Is this, you're asking? You. Okay, okay. Um, well, I, I think what I was trying to, to get across towards the end of my presentation was the game is changing. So um, the, the successful researchers are fine, of course, because they get more money uh, to do more research. The, the rest, um, I would say they're no different. You know, it's not, we haven't cracked the problem. Um, I'm trying to convey a sense that it's, 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 it's changing gradually. The, the spotlight is on, it has been on, but that, will in, that light will intensify and uh, there will be less of a hiding place than there has been. So your question perhaps is, well, what's the sanction? And that is something that is under discussion, actually. It may be that people, um, I mean, I, yeah, it may be that people can no longer rely on um, uh, tenure. Um, I, I guess this is a difference in approach. <laughs> a large part of my energy is uh, is invested in uh, trying to convince. I mean, I mean, to to convey or to communicate that why this is necessary. Because mm -hmm. I mean, we. I mean, I'm 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 a professor myself, and uh, we we are professors because we only say and do what we believe is right. Right. If if 
the entire world is against you if, if you believe that you do that, right? So how do you manage and control that kind of species, right? It's impossible. Mm. Um, so uh, it's, 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 it's re you really have to convey. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not enough to say this is a university policy, but you really have to convince people to, to communicate uh, with, uh, with, with, these, uh, with, with the academic staff that why this is necessary. I mean, what, what is the mission of, uh, when you, you know, why are we doing what we do? I mean, why do we exist anyway? Kind of thing, right? And uh, we need to be, we, we being the, the universe of the headquarter, need to be, um, to, to, to be receptive to uh, some of the, I mean, so, so we, in, in a nutshell, uh, occasionally, I, I, I do things at the expense of uh, ranking that, uh, I mean, after a serious conversation, if the conclusion is we need to maintain this policy at the, at the cost of ranking, that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but again, let me repeat that only once more. I've been repeating this many times that, um, that, 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 that the good thing, good, good, the value of ranking is that it stimulates that kind of discussion. And that kind of uh, that that kind of decision making. So um, I realise I focused my answer on the national um, rankings. So this is the these are the tables that or the the ref really that so it's about income. That's where there I think will be no hiding place. I think the um, the international rankings um, we would take the same approach. It, they would they would become. Um, we wouldn't let them get in the way of anything we wanted to do strategically. They wouldn't, they wouldn't alter our direction. And we would very much use the kind of carrot rather than the stick, I think. Yeah. Um, as a comment to your uh, question is that I'm, I'm from the Netherlands. And um, we are actually glad that your faculty is reacting as it is reacting. Um, I've been giving many presentations on publication strategy, etc., to before it's, it's, the goal is for good research to uh, show it in a better place, in a better standing than um, uh, it is sometimes uh, shown. And that showcasing is really becoming more and more important. So you go for the, the better journals in, in your, your categories and these kind of things. But I always tell uh, uh, researchers in the Netherlands that um, in the United States, this is not at stake at the moment, but once the United States wakes up and have also these kind of uh, mechanisms in place, then we are dwarfed. We, we're really dwarfed because now the, most of the citations are already going on within the United States. Uh, 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 American researchers are citing uh, disproportionately uh, uh, to a large extent uh, only their fellow uh, researchers. So if they start to reinforce that mechanism by citing more, they will cite their colleagues even more. So then we have a real problem. Then only un uh, American universities will be at the top of the league tables and, and all the other uh, continents yeah. will be yeah. drop, dropped down. Yeah, correct. That's reality. Yeah. I also wanted to respond to Mackenzie's comment. Um, some of the points I made this morning, perhaps I, I was trying to address the notion of a global research enterprise, but the reality in my experience is that the faculty culture in the United States is completely different to any other country in which I've worked. Partly there is the, the notion of promotion and or the, the tenure system makes things very different. We simply cannot direct a faculty member in the US to do anything. There is simply, you know, we have no carrot or stick, frankly. <clears throat> in the UK and in Australia and in New Zealand, the national research assessment systems are used to allocate substantial quantities of government research funding, not just to institutions, but inside institutions to research teams and individual researchers. So there is a great incentive to comply, no matter how reluctantly. Uh, but to give you an, an anecdote from Carnegie Mellon, when we implemented ORCID earlier this year, the notion of even trying to you know, persuade people nicely to take the time to click one URL in an email message to have 
an ORCID ID assigned and to populate into our HR system. It was as though we were know, telling them to jump off a cliff simply because it was seen as an intervention from university administration. Intended to be for the faculty members own good, it was entirely optional, but there was an, an instinctive reaction that this must be a bad thing, <laughs> get lost or words to that effect. It's very familiar. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to respond to Keith's response to Mackenzie. Um, I'm uh, Ginny Steele from UCLA, and uh, what I wanted to say is, yes, we're having those same faculty reactions, but some of the deans are becoming very determined, and they're taking data, particularly faculty productivity, citations, uh, outputs, and uh, grants and contracts, and they're using that in terms of space allocation. And they're looking at moving non-productive faculty out of their lab spaces. And, uh, and this is going on, as you might imagine, it started in medicine, it's spreading to the rest of the sciences. But there's, there is increased discussion among the deans of ways of using this and, and looking at space as sort of the, the thing that faculty want most. And there's even discussion, because UCLA has a, a terrible space shortage, there's talk about maybe there will come a point where some faculty simply don't have offices. If they want to do their work, they have to do it at home. It's, it becomes their own obligation. So, so I do think there are ways that and there are incentives or disincentives that can be levied in this. Perhaps one more Call question. <laughs> That's a stick, not a carrot. That's really interesting. One never more question. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say never say never. I mean, the UK used to have tenure. We don't have tenure anymore. Things change. It just takes a long time. <laughs> Okay, I think that wraps up a good discussion. Would you join with me in thanking um, Jiro and Jan?